Okay, we're going to begin our watercolor weaving and I'm going to do mine very miniature so it all shows up here on the screen for you today. But what you're going to be doing is you're going to be creating two, paint, two paintings, two separate paintings. Um, they should look different. Um, each painting should have a different feel or a different color scheme to it. Um, and then when we combine these into a single painting, um, by cutting them apart and weaving them, it will take on then even a third um, feel in regards to the painting itself. Again, you're going to be working significantly larger. I'm working very small so that you can see everything that I'm doing on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and set one of my um, watercolor papers off to the side and I'm going to go ahead and start doing some thinking about how I want to incorporate some of the various techniques um, that we have been experimenting with in regard to watercolor. Some of the things that um, you have done, you have done some resist using um, a white or even other colored crayon um, to create that wax resist when the paint is then taken over the top, um, the surface where the crayon wax is um, adhering to the surface is then uh, retains that whiteness of the surface. You've also experimented with um, isopropyl alcohol um, and using uh, Q-tips or cotton swabs to draw into um, the watercolor that you have there. Um, so that might be something we'll experiment with again. You've also used um, a little bit of a pinch of salt on top of your painting um, when it is still wet and watching the reaction of the salt with the watercolor and the water in the paper. Another technique that some of you have experimented with is graffito where you are carving into um, the surface when it is either wet or dry. I prefer to do it when it's more um, wet so I can kind of see a little bit better about the look that I'm getting. So those are going to be probably some of the things that I'm going to incorporate into my two paintings. So um, first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do some resist. Now this will be difficult to see on the video because I'm doing white on white. So you're going to be surprised, hopefully anyway, at what you see when I actually get to some of the painting. And for those of you who know me, this is a common motif in my personal artwork. And again, when you're doing wax resist, you need to give it that firm pressure. Okay, so now I think I'm ready to go ahead and start doing some painting. One thing that I like to do um, when I am using any type of paint, be it watercolor or acrylic or tempera, um, when I have a wet brush and I want to dry that brush just a little bit, I will use just a dampened sponge that has had the water squeezed as much as possible out of it and then I will just brush my brush across that sponge and that sponge then helps to suck some of the water out of there. But since I'm working with watercolors, I do want to have some of that water so that I can work with and get my color. Now the paints that we are using are the Crayola watercolor mixing set. So it may look just a little different than what you might be used to seeing um, in regard to watercolor because it's not the standard eight colors that you might be used to in a student set. So now that I've got my resist on here, I'm going to, I think, start doing some, uh, oh, let's see, what kind of a, I think I'm going to kind of start here, and I'm going to, and again, this is, you know, painting in whatever style you are developing as a watercolor painter. And so just kind of let it, you know, have a plan, but also just let it happen. So you're starting to see some of my resist coming in. And again, remember, I'm working much smaller than what you are going to be working just because of the constraints of my projector.
and you do want to make sure that you're painting all areas you don't want to leave any corners untouched we do want to have this be a very solid painting it is important though when you're switching colors that you do go in with that clean brush so but you can also kind of mix some of your colors right here on your watercolor paper. You could also do some pre-mixing in your um, watercolor tray or if you have a separate palette you, you could do some some types of mixing on too. And I'm going to wet in this area just a little bit so I think I would like to um, have a little salt interaction here. And a lot of times you go, okay, that's great. What's it doing? It's just sitting there. Well, a lot of times with the salt effect, we don't necessarily get to see the fruits of our labors until our painting is dry. So we'll have to keep that in mind. And because you are going to be working significantly larger than I am working, obviously your painting is going to take you uh, quite a bit more time than, than what it is that I'm doing here. Just kind of feeling how I like the colors, what I'm kind of aiming for there. So added in some things here to, you'll notice how my colors have mixed a little bit differently. You're starting to see a little bit of, of the effect of the salt over here where it is drying some. So I think I'm gonna, again, give this a kind of a once over um, dampness so that I could add some of that salt over here also. And it does not take much. All right. I think I may also, well, I'm not gonna like how that's going to look. All right, so I'm gonna leave this as is. I'm gonna go in and touch up those little areas and. I thought I was going to scraffito, but I'm not liking how it was looking. Okay, so I'm going to set this painting off to the side. Um, again, you can see I'm kind of messy here. I am going to expect good cleanup, washing, drying, sponging your table. And I'm going to pull in my other one. And I think um, for this one, I may try a little dry scraffito. And I, I think I may go in stark contrast to the types of marks that I made on the last painting. And I think that might be just enough for that. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead and add some some paints in. And I think this is going to call for my painting to be very contrasting style also. I 
And for those of you who know me, this is very uncharacteristic of my personal style, so I'm kind of experimenting with style here also. But I think in the end, I may be very pleased with my choices. So far I've been doing kind of blending with my brush, but I may choose to come back in here and add some dry brush to it also. To make it a little more bold and a little less soft than what I'm doing. Again, this is not how I want your painting to look. I want your painting to look completely different because I want it to be your painting. So I'm thinking... try a little bit of the alcohol. You can see how it's kind of separating here. I'm just kind of going in and kind of adding some streaks. The uh, alcohol also has kind of a resist kind of quality to it. I might throw in some of those circular motifs that we had in the previous painting. And again, it's going to look completely different after it dries. So. I think we're going to set that off to the side too and, and allow that to dry for just, well, maybe not. You know, as the artist, you're always inclined to change your mind. I think I'm going to go in and add some fairly dry brush um, watercolor um, in the contrasting blue that I used in the other piece. And I think I want to... Um, mm, Maybe just come in and throw some accent pieces in here. And then maybe, I don't want to get too carried away, but I am having a good time. I'm going to use a little bit more wetter brush. And I'm going to splatter. Now, no, you could probably hear me backing up. I'm going to splatter. And I'm using just my finger and the brush smacking against my finger. And I could change colors if I wanted. Now, if you're doing this, just kind of be careful that um, you're not um, splatter painting onto your neighbor's painting. Um, you might want to move to a completely different area so that you are isolated and, and not damaging anyone else's work in your process. So I'm going to leave these off to dry for now, and we'll come back in a moment as soon as they're dry, and um, or a video moment, I should say, 
when they are dry and um, we'll work on then the cutting and um, putting it together to become one single painting. Okay, so my two paintings are dry. Um, this was the second one that I did with Graffito, a little dry brush, um, or sort of dry brush, and some splatter painting. Um, this was the first one that I did with the crayon resist and the salt on top. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of wipe that salt off now that it's dry. And you can see the effect that it makes. It kind of reminds me of frost um, on the window. Um, I believe this one we also did a little bit of, uh, and you can see the lighter areas, is where we did some of the alcohol, the rubbing alcohol on top. So now we're ready to go ahead and we're going to divide one of these into one inch strips horizontally and we're going to divide one of them into one inch strips vertically so that we'll be able to weave them together. Now since mine are smaller, I'm going to be using centimeters. The first thing you're going to do is take one of your paintings off to the side, take the other one, flip it upside down. I'm going to divide this one vertically. So I'm going to line up my zero mark with the edge of my paper and you're going to do this across the top and the bottom. Again, I'm using centimeters um, to scale with your one inch um, paper that is larger. Again, I'm working smaller so that you can see the entire piece at one time. And then I'm going to go down and do the same thing across the bottom. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect those lines and these are the lines that I'm going to cut on so you do want to be careful that you're making the marks exactly where you need to make them. Okay, now I found that it's best if we number these, so I'm going to number them actually backwards. It just helps us to put them in order without having to think too hard. Now when you're doing your cutting, you don't want to do rough hacking marks with your scissors. You want to do nice smooth fluid cuts so we don't have any jagged edges. So again this will be a step that you're going to want to take your time on. Whoops.
Okay, so now we're going to need to put them in order. One will be over here, 16 will be over here. So here's 16. Maybe we'll just do it like this so we can see the numbers first and get them in order. Okay, then if we flip them all over, now since these are small, they're a little bit out of control, so I have to just work with them a little bit. And we're going to get them all taped down here in a minute. Now, when you're taping yours down, I would suggest you tape it down to a drawing board because you're going to want yours to be portable so that at the end of each class period you don't have to untape everything and it'll be easier for you to clean up. Now you're going to want to use some of the half inch drafting tape and the drafting tape will make it less likely that you'll tear your paper when you remove the tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little piece of tape and I'm going to tape each top down but when I do that, I'm going to leave about a sixteenth of an inch in between. And that's going to allow room for our paper that we're going to weave horizontally to fit in there. And don't worry if it's not quite exactly perfect all the way down. That's going to shift some as we add on um, the horizontal pieces. In fact, it's quite likely that you may not use um, one of your strips in the, in the end. So we just have to kind of play that by ear. But we're just kind of putting this together. And in the end, we'll be gluing all the ends together, both both weaving, um, both paintings that you've done. So it'll be nice and secure. This is just temporary. Okay, now that we have that done, we're ready to work with our other painting, and this time we're going to cut it horizontally. I'm just going to lay a piece of paper over that other painting so that I'm not catching on the little strips. Again, I'm using one centimeter marks, where you're going to be using one inch marks. Oops, and then I started trying to use the Okay, you're going to be using one centimeter marks, but this time make sure you're marking so that you're going to be going horizontal or the long way down your paper. Make those marks across the top and the bottom, or if you want to think of it as both sides, you can do that also. And then just like before, we're going to connect those.
And one more. Again, let's number those. And we're numbering backwards. And then cut those. Again, you want to use nice cutting, no jagged edges. Now it would be a good idea to assemble <clears throat> this painting off to the side so that you can see what you're going to be doing. Now these you don't need to tape down because these are the ones that you're going to be weaving in. And so I would start with my number one strip. And just like we've always weaved before, woven before, um, over, under, over, under. And it's pretty simple here in the beginning. Now you'll notice that it's not getting all the way across. But just leave those there for right now because um, we'll be able to compact it in tighter and we'll be able to weave those in. So what I'm going to do is I want to kind of leave this out. And I also want to try to get this up and as close to the top as possible. So now I'm going to go opposite. I went under before, so now I'm going to go start over. my second strip and again I'm going to want to try to push that up as far as I can and then we'll be sliding everything into the middle also so just continue weaving And again, it'll seem kind of loose and wobbly, at, you know, right off, but we'll, we'll come back and we'll adjust everything. We just need to kind of get everything woven in, and then we can make adjustments. But this gives us a place to start.
Okay. It's about as much as I can put in for now until we start doing some adjustments. So the first thing we need to do is start with this very top corner. You can remove the tape and what you're going to want to do is to glue matching up that corner perfectly on both strips. You're going to want to pick up that corner and add just a smidge of glue. And go ahead and hold that down and even you can kind of tape it down to kind of keep it in place. Because then we're going to just keep going across and removing tape. But now we're going to be sliding and adjusting this strip. What might be better to do first is kind of work getting them together. Okay, so I'm matching up that edge. Now we aren't going to be able to glue that one just yet, so we're just going to kind of put the piece of tape back over it. This one we are going to be able to glue. I'm going to take this last strip out for right now, just so we aren't tearing it apart. You're going to slide it over. And this part, the adjusting it and getting things to fit snugly and getting things uniform is probably going to take just as long, if not longer, than any of the other processes um, that we've done because this is what's really going to make the work come together. Now you can also see what I could start to do is I could start coming down this side and I could keep start adjusting but I'm going to just keep working across the top for now to get that all worked in. Now this is one that I can't glue right away but I'm going to get it pushed in there where I want it. I'll just kind of tape it back in place. And again, you want to make sure that your edges are even across the top so that it's going to maintain that rectangle shape.
Now you're going to see where we can weave in the strips on the side that we didn't get to weave in before because now we have room for them. We may not have room for all of them, but we will have room for at least one or two of them. Okay, so let's just kind of leave it at that for right now. Now let's start coming and adjusting things horizontally as we want it to be evenly spaced also. And then we can put a little glue and I am going to use a little bit of tape to just help that glue stick down there. And then again, adjusting all the way across. in a little bit, but just be gentle. Because you want to kind of watch to make sure that this is all staying compacted also.
I don't know if we can get one more. We might be able to sneak one more in here. be able to trim up the little pieces that are hanging over on the edges since this is our last row. But we want to make sure we get everything glued in there. Now once this side dries, once we've got things glued on this side and it's dry, we're going to want to flip it, untape everything obviously, and then we will um, flip it over and glue the ends on the other side um, so everything is nice and secure. And again, I'm kind of keeping mindful of are my spacings okay up above? Adjusting to get that in there. Looks like we'll be able to maybe move things around a little bit in the inside once we get that all set. Because it looks like these are all matching up about like so. So that's how I want to get that one glued because it looks like these are kind of overlapping here, so we'll be able to adjust those a little bit. All right, now I do have one strip left that I'm not gonna use. Now I have these three strips here. It looks like I can get two of them in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'll just kind of pick those up and move those a little bit. And then I will come in and um, I'll weave those this way. So it's possible that you won't use at least one of your strips. Um, there's a chance you might not use two of your strips, but I'm thinking one strip is all that you will probably omit um, from each of your pieces. So I've got that one in there. Get it lined up across the top. Get it secured in there. And then that will be one that I, I glue from the other side. And then we'll take, I think, what will be our last strip here. Your strips will be just a little easier to work with because they're a little bit larger than these smaller strips that I'm using as a demonstration. Okay. Now this one is one that we need to get secured up in there, lined up the way we want it. or have it completely come out. Maybe we'll be better if we do it this way. So let's go ahead and secure this. Get it lined up and tucked in there. And we'll get that one secure. All right, now we can go ahead and secure this one. 
making sure that we've got things lined up okay. Okay, so now that I've got that all done, we'll let that dry, and um, when it's dry, we'll flip it over and we'll glue the other ends and do any trimming that we might need to do with any little pieces that are hanging over, and we'll sign our work. Okay, I think we're dry enough now that we can start to flip it over. So we'll just take the tape off. You may want to keep some of this tape around because we're probably going to use it to hold down the tabs on the other side when we get those glued. Okay, so now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to find all those tabs that did not have glue on them. And I'm just going to put a little glue on, stick them down.
Okay, so again, it's just a waiting game. We gotta sit and wait and let those tabs dry down. Then we, okay, I think this is dry enough. So now we can remove all the tape and finish things up. And just very carefully along the edge. Trim off any pieces. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. The last thing we need to do then is we need to sign our work. Artists usually sign in the lower right corner. And I could date this 2012. At this point, it's ready to hand in. Congratulations.